Okay. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey. Hey guys. Uh, jo uh, Joe. Where? Joe. Where? Steve. Kevin. Oh no. Oh no. Don't feel like watching movies, so I'll watch people get them instead. I don't know how it goes. I think it starts with your uh, uh, show. I don't know what happened, and I'm as disappointed as you guys are. But I tell you, there is no one here right now. That's fine. I'm gonna pretend. I'm just gonna pretend. Pretend that my friends are here, and I'm gonna pretend that we're all hanging out. We're all hanging out. <laughs> Steve is. Stop it, you can't say that word. Oh gosh, Kevin's gonna have to edit it. And Joe, what did you see on Reddit? What did you, oh, Kevin, oh, Kevin like the rock climbing. Anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to the Valley Cast. My name is Elliot Morgan, I'm here by myself. Um, I don't know why everything fell apart. I was out of town and um, I'm here to tell you about what I did, and I'm here to share my thoughts on it, and it's going to be a quick one, all right? But it's going to be, I think, a quality one, um, or not. I don't know. Honestly, it took me forever to figure out how to record this thing. I don't know the last time that like I recorded really anything directly to anything, to any kind of camera. Um, I, I used to do that quite a bit. I, I always think about doing it, and then I never do. What's that line? from Curb Your Enthusiasm, the, he says, I always think of nice things to do, but I never act on them. Something like that. It's really great. Anyway, I went and I saw the Long Island Medium. I'll let you sit back down. Get off the floor. Um, Teresa Caputo! I went and saw the Long Island Medium talk to dead people for two hours, and I gotta tell you, it was fascinating. Little backstory, folks. My lovely uh, wife has not had the most fun year. Uh, she has had a very tough time going through, um, this will connect, believe it or not, to the Long Island medium. Um, She's been going through chemotherapy because of what's called cancer. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this before. It's fairly popular. And we recently received really good news, which is that she has no signs of cancer. Um, after going through an incredibly intense round of chemo, or multiple rounds of chemo, and then a surgery, and the poor woman's just been poked and prodded so much that it's uh, ridiculous. But during this past year, we haven't done a lot of traveling. We haven't been seeing a lot of folks normally. Uh, and by folks, I mean parents, family, friends, whatever. And so we now can kind of start going out a little more, which is nice. And uh, Grace had not seen her mom and stepdad for quite a while. And so they came to Palm Springs. We went to Agua Caliente, which is a casino in Palm Springs with uh, the in-laws and uh, my lovely wife has a tendency to get really fun uh, event tickets, like goofy ones, things that you wouldn't normally go to. For example, Long Island Medium, or WrestleMania, or an Ugly Dog Contest. These are events that I like to go to with her. They're fun and silly most of the time, okay? So, here's the deal. <sighs> this it did not disappoint. However... It's Palm Springs, it's a casino, it's, it's me, so I'm like, I'm going to take a little bit of an edible, all right? Just a tiny, a uh, little something. I have this brand that I found that I really like, that's very clean, but very not, it doesn't make me too crazy, right? Okay, so it's just a normal, whatever. I know, right, Steve? Yeah, I'm going to do that every now and then if that's okay. Uh, so I take this little bit of an edible, and I am ready to rock and roll. All right, I got a little beer. I got a little edible in me. I'm about to enjoy myself some Teresa Caputo talking to dead people. Um, immediately, I am blown away by the spectacle before me. What begins, first of all, she begins the show relatively promptly with the Star Spangled Banner. No, excuse me, the National Anthem. I get them confused. 
Oh, say, can you see? Is that which one's that? No, uh, I don't know. But you know the one. I I'm like yes, let's do it because I love that stuff. Everybody, b- before I even look over at the in-laws or the wife, I shoot up out of my seat, put my hand over my heart, and I'm like, let's rock and roll, okay? Because that gets everybody into a new mindset, gets everybody out of their current way of thinking so that they can get zoned in on the deads, all right? Then she comes out, Teresa Caputo. And I let me tell you something. I don't know what y'all's uh, opinion is on mediums in general or para- psychology or the paranormal um i tend to be skeptical but welcoming i enjoy it very much for what it is and we're gonna get more into that later on in the episode in case you thought this was not gonna get a little boring um that's my skill set is i can make something as interesting as Teresa caputo kind of boring so she comes out and i don't know if y'all have seen her before she got crazy hair all right the big blonde you know super tanned face like a like a trump kind of character very, you know, just all, just, you know, very New York, very Long Island. And she comes out, she does this speech. And at first I'm like, well, she seems kind of rough around the edges. Maybe she's not really used to doing this so much. Maybe she's new to it. There's a little bit of a, a, a discomfort with her on stage, kind of like there is with me doing this podcast entirely by myself because nobody else wanted to do it. And they said they don't like me anymore, but that's beside the point. We'll get into it in a later episode. But she looked like maybe like she hadn't done this so much. And I was like, it is actually added to the charm here's the problem okay she does this whole monologue and then (laughs) she starts like just she (coughs) and she starts being like some something who throat throat who something's grabbing me it's right here in the throat thing bold move all right now maybe five minutes into this show i realize something that this is not going to be a ha-ha, entirely ha-ha experience. This is... Have you ever realized that you're in the presence of, like, a lot of sad people? And, like, a lot of grief? And a lot of them have all gathered in this same place, in this casino in the desert, so that hopefully they can find some kind of closure on what may or may not be the most painful aspect of their lives all of a sudden i got real into it and real sad i looked at the woman next to me and she was by herself i thought to myself oh my gosh why is she here by herself what led her here what does she want from this quietly sitting intently staring i'm watching her I find myself sending her good, good thoughts, good, nice, like almost like praying. I'm high out of my mind at this point. Everything's totally kicked in. And instead of being like, this is goofy, I have tears coming down my face as all of a sudden Teresa Caputo is talking to people about throat people, their dead relatives who had throat stuff happen. Like they either hung themselves or they, uh, you know, you cut them their throats, or they had a lung can or a throat cancer, and then she starts going around, basically doing what would be referred to as free association. And she'll see these things. She'll get a little. T- oh, they they tapping me on the shoulder. They 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 um. Oh, uh. No, I'll find it. Hang on. Um. Uh. Oh, you, you, your father wants you to know. Your father wants you to know it's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong, and he's at peace now. Now, that's how basically every, like, um, uh, everyone went. And she, this was for two hours. She did a little, there's the national anthem, which I'm pretty sure she sung, with uh, videos of waving uh, American flags. Beautiful. She comes out on stage. She stands in, on top, uh, atop two angel wings. Why not? She's an angel. There's two big angel wings on the, um, the, the back of the stage, afterward, we were like, what is this, like, you know, you got, like, one bus, maybe? And like, a truck? Like, this is a tight operation, and she is packing the house. Like, people are there to see her uh, rock star, rock star stuff. So she comes out, and I thought maybe there would be, like, a little something else. I don't know what I was expecting. I thought maybe there would be, like, 
here's a guest from a, a previous thing, and they, here's what they're here's an update on this person's dead relative. And it wasn't that; it was she just walked around the 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 audience and she just found people, and then she would be like, "Okay, there's this thing called piggybacking. So the piggybacking, uh, if I say something and maybe it doesn't resonate with you, maybe someone." Three seats over goes, oh, that's who that is and what that is. And I tell you, it's called piggybacking, all right? So don't be afraid to speak up. It's All right, so let's get to brass tacks. What is actually going on here? Do we Are we going to play the skeptical card? Are we going to say, you know, that... Um, are we going to take what the philosophical position of materialistic monism or positivism... Uh, and say that all that is real is that which we can see and prove empirically um, or are we going to take a more perhaps um, uh, holistic or, or uh, what would be the the word I'm looking for maybe dual aspect mo- you know those kind of, you know then I just start masturbating for <laughs> but uh, are we going to be skeptical about it or are we going to enjoy it for what it is and take it for what it is and and it, it, this is both what I'm talking about right now and what's going through my head at the same time. I had to make a, a decision very quickly that I was either going to enter into the fantasy, which is not to say that it's not real for these people, but it's like a fantasy for, you know, you're entering into just kind of a, what I like to think of it is, here's what I like to think of it. It's basically imagination. It's taking people out of their rational way of understanding things and it's putting them into to a fantasy that allows a certain amount of healing to take place. And I kid you not, the look on these people's faces when they were healed was gnarly it was like the the you could feel the weight being lifted off of them each time Teresa was like they want you to know you didn't do anything wrong you didn't do anything wrong and the what blew me away is like these folks here's what it is basically everybody is just constituted of stories in addition to all the brain chemicals and the socioeconomic background and the genetic inheritance or whatever okay so when you can exit your own story for a second and go into someone else's story even if they're like an ancestor or whatever it places you in a different context it's not so me 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 all the time all of a sudden don't worry the person says you didn't do anything wrong that becomes like a a a silver bullet of healing i don't know if that's a good metaphor or not in fact i think it's to kill vampires or something um metaphors are hard Speaking of metaphors, that's also how Teresa Caputo would talk, which is always very fun. She'd be like, I'm seeing legs. And there's, what is it, walking? Did they have trouble getting somewhere? And it's like, you know, it's a, very, very fun. Here's another thing. So uh, to, to put a pin in that whole philosophical thing, basically you enter into the fantasy and it's fun. All right, that's it. And people are suffering and they need healing and they go where they can to get it. And I'm not going to sit here and judge that. That said, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not like, (laughs) I'm not gonna, I, I, I didn't leave thinking like, that's a lot of dead people that she talked to. I left thinking like she made a lot of people feel really good and really entertained them. And here's another thing she did, which I thought was super clever. Y'all she, at the very beginning, explains that she uh, asks the spirits to be funny. She asks them to speak humorously. And um, that was very helpful because it allowed her to be really, really funny throughout the whole thing. And my goodness, if you want to talk just charisma as a quality, this woman has it in spades. It was unbelievable. I was like, look at the... I was glued to what she was doing the entire time. Ups and downs, the stories that people were telling, the tears come down their face. Thank you, Teresa. You look beautiful. And oh, the women. Oh, gosh. The women. The women. The women in this crowd. Whew. Oh, could have hugged every one of them. Most of them reminded me of one or more of my aunts, like, like put together by AI. And they had a lot of them had big blonde hair like Teresa. I mean, these are like fans. I was spotting them in the casino before we went in. I was like, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. We'll see them in there. Um, not a lot of dudes. Uh, and so she, the spirits would speak humorously, um, would joke around. And sometimes the spirits of dead people would get a little um, pithy with, one, with other people's relatives because they would cut in line. 
They would tap Teresa on the shoulder. Again, pretty high. Okay. So any, anything could have probably blown me away at this point. But this was there were a couple moments where she would say something like, um, I'm seeing a gardenia. And these women, these two women that were sisters were like, oh my god, my mother, my mother hated gardenias. And, uh, <laughs> and she would call this, what was it? It was, uh, validation. She would say that's, okay, so that's validation. And so somebody would say something and there would be like a very specific thing. Like there, I remember, uh, gardenias and then white butterflies, um, and then some of them were, like, insanely generic. It'd be, like, a floral dress or, like, a purse, a red purse. And she would talk, uh, she'd go, this is my symbol for. When I see this, that's a symbol. I'm seeing someone there in fog. Does that mean maybe it wasn't, there wasn't total closure? Yes, it was a little snake oily at times. It was a little like, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, how are you going to get out of this? And she had a sense of humor about it. She would be like, this is why people say things about me on the internet. And she made it very clear at the beginning that she did not care if anybody believed that she was legit or not. Which I think that if you're going to become one of the most famous mediums in all of American history, that's going to be a good trait. You're not going to want to, um, excuse me, I had Siri listen to me for a second. Uh, you're not going to want to care too much if people think that, uh, do or don't believe in you. Which leads us, folks, to uh, uh, the skeptics. If you, the same way you could take my ants and mix them into a little blender and pour out the mixture into that auditorium like a I guess, hairspray smoothie. If you were to take me, even more obnoxious, skeptical, you know, person, can be. Not really, I'm not, but you know. I am in these events. A little. Uh, there, she called on not one, but two, like, versions of a dude who got dragged there by his significant other and the, <laughs> the look on the girlfriend's faces were like, Oh, just please don't be mean The they, there were a couple dudes who gave Teresa Caputo absolutely nothing. Now we've talked about this before, maybe a little bit. I am a huge, huge proponent of being, um, of awkward moments, especially when I'm not directly involved with them. Even if I am, Sometimes I like uh, the I like the palpable um, cringe like oh this is gonna get uncomfortable and if I'm a little high I like it even more um, especially if I'm you know in a balcony looking down on him um, from a distance this guy was like she would be like what about what about a handbag what about a handbag or, you know what it would be anything no no that doesn't mm -mm. No, I don't, I don't, mm -mm. no, that uh, doesn't mean anything to me, no, everything she said, no, that didn't mean, no, nothing, and uh, people were getting so pissed, the people behind, uh, a guy behind me was like, pass the mic, pass the mic, and I'm like, well, no, you want somebody to be like a little bit like, no, bullshit, don't believe you, I loved it. And she, again, made it very clear. I don't care if you don't. You don't have to believe me. You don't have, she kept going and going. And she wouldn't give up. I was like, she's going to really. And he wasn't going to give up. It was this battle between, you know, one um, silly person and then one very serious person. And they, they weren't meshing. And so she bounced back. And the look on, oh, man, the look on the, the dude's you know, girlfriend's face was just like, I felt like I could see the beginnings of what was going to be an argument uh, on the way home. And then another guy, uh, she did it again. I was like, I wouldn't do that. If I were um, totally like charlatan type person, I would only go for, you know, you can kind of, the ones that are like, their eyes are just, you know, they're completely, basically the way that I looked, but for different reasons. Um, 
And she did it. She went straight for the people that were like, no, I don't think so. I don't know. No, no, I don't. I don't believe this. I don't believe that this is real. Um, and it kind of it, it took the energy down. And I think that it reminds me of that Pete Holmes bit back in the day when he talks about people at magic shows and they just can't enter into the, the fantasy. They have to be like, it's magnets like they have to figure it out and they can't let themselves just enjoy it and go with it and i think that probably if anything is how you end up not being able to talk to dead people if you do want to talk to dead people i'm making this up i could be totally wrong i think you have to believe that you can talk to dead people you know i feel like that is step one and so you guys if you're going no i don't believe this then guess what it's not going to be real because what dead person is going to want to talk to you Anyway, I like the ancestors myth. I, li I like that. It's a way of, of, of remembering that you're part of something bigger than yourself. Do I, I think that they're all there staring uh, at me all the time? Are they in this room right now? Are the spirits of Joe and Steve? St Steve, stop it. Is the spirit of Kevin here? Is he okay with the format I sent this podcast in? Is he okay if it's a little rushed because I have to give the cord back to my a cord back to my uh, back to my wife because she has to use it? Is that going to be okay? Or can I feel his anger right now, his frustration? No, Elliot, this is so captivating. You should have made it go on so much longer. Please, just please, just just just. just just ramble about how does this apply to well how it applies is the idea that you that we are constituted of stories and we have you know um myths we're constantly in myth all the time everything that we're doing is falls into some sort of narrative structure and um we tend to stay in like the same one which is we need to solve everything we need to fix everything i have to fix it i'm sad i'm suffering from grief i'm have depression i have this i need to conquer the depression i need to conquer the um the the apathy or whatever pick your poison and it's always that kind of heroic i'm going to get i'm going to do this and you you white knuckle through life instead of sitting back and going wait what else is going on what is the depression go where is this depression taking me what's the apathy all about and what you normally find is that there's something going on there. There's something deeply um, fantasy-based going on with what seem like the most mundane things. And when someone goes, hey, it's okay. You're dead, uh, whatever, are um, okay with you. That allows you to go, oh, oh I, don't have to keep I don't have to keep reading all the self-help. Now I know my dead whatever is fine with it some of the stuff she did was a little creepy she got a little um specific at times where i was like okay all right you know that kind of like no <laughs> but not exactly like a you know world changing um worldview changing experience i would say uh really beautiful though like so beautiful i was so taken aback and she's so good like ch like so charming there's also different ways you can just kind of, you know, she's definitely a highly intuitive person and quick on her feet and very intelligent. And so I think that that uh, is really smart. She has a kind of, well, archetypally it would be like a trickster kind of deal, because obviously, because she, she looks ridiculous. She looks like uh, 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 it's this really outdated mega church pastor's wife um, from the 90s like aesthetic. But it hides, it distracts from the fact that she's like a pro. Like, she knows what she's doing. I don't know if she knows what she's doing with her daughter, but she knows what she's doing with the crowd. Respected it. I was like, this more, like, stand-ups. I would be back into stand-up. That's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start incorporating a little bit of medium work into when I start doing stand-up again. I'm going to make it, like, mostly jokes, but then I'm also going to be like, Mm, I am going to probably, I'd like to just talk to, about some dead people. And I, hey, I don't know what the afterlife looks like or if there is one. I like to think there is. But goodness. If the afterlife is like you're just invisible. 
that'd be kind of a bummer. Like, oh, I'm still here. Now it's just like no one can see me. All right, I'll go talk to this blonde woman. Tap her on the shoulder. Oh, no, I'm upset with this other person. Some of the, the stories people have, dude. People, you if you scratch, if you just, like, flick them, they will tell you their life story, their deepest traumas, because the people have pain that they, when you see them on the street, they look okay. Everyone has stuff that they're dealing with all the time. Not me, but other people. Wild. And then you have this, there's like a feeling, like when everyone is just like, and that feeling says to me, Elliot, you're an asshole. You're gonna be, you're gonna feel bad about me. When we first got there, dude, I, I saw a large photo of Teresa Caputo. And like a moron, I was like, hey, take my picture. And I handed the phone to my wife and I jumped in front of it. And then people were uh, people were like, oh, we were in, in line. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And everybody was really cool about it. But then I realized that like the, the pictures they were taking with the, the, the poster were not ironic. Um, they were <laughs> they were like, I was like, oh. I just uh, I don't want to yuck anybody's yum, I guess, but um, it was that was the first clue that this wasn't going to be as like, oh how ridiculous as I thought because it can't be when you're it's juxtaposed with this ridiculous looking person, really funny jokes like she was very funny. Combine that with all of these incredibly dark stories that are so universal. Everybody's lost somebody at some point or will, and everybody has to wonder at some point, should I have done more? What could I have done? And, you know, uh, that's what she ended with every time. No, you didn't need to work. You, you did great. One of the things that was interesting is something about, like, she would talk about there's another, there's another son, another son, you know, when one has found peace, but the other hasn't. And that kind of thing. Where it's like, apparently, whatever these folks are doing on the other side of the uh, the um, the realm of the you know, physical world, they got their own stuff going on. Maybe that's the case. Maybe you get to keep going. I don't know. Or maybe you just reincarnate. You guys like that meme that's popping up right now? Like, <laughs> what's the one I saw? It was like, Something, something who died in 2019 and then it's COVID. Welcome back. Who died in 20? I don't know, man. God, I'm trying to just, oh, that's, that's why, that's why it's better when there's both, then there's four, when there's four people and it, you can't, because I should have at least, I could have uh, written a, um, or I could have, um, I could have written an outline or something to make this a little bit more, uh, you know, like a point. Um, Anyway, I'm listening to this uh, this audio book. If you guys, we'll we'll do a little um, we'll do a little uh, book recommendation round since no one's here and that's fun for me. I am listening to one book on Audi- Audible called The Squad uh, by Ryan Grimm. I really like Ryan Grimm as a journalist, and it's about AOC and and um, the others, and it's super fascinating, and I, I highly recommend it. Also on Spotify, I don't know if you guys know this because Spotify is my jam. They uh they have audiobooks now, so I've been going through a lot of old James Hillman stuff because I love James Hillman, and one is called Myths of the Family, and that kind of relates to what we were talking about. It's the idea that you know you're you're when you are when you're dealing with family you're dealing with the most archetypal powerful stuff and that's where fantasy runs rampant and again fantasy is not to say that it's not real or is real or what whatever um super interesting if you if you get bored with that what was the one i did before myths of the family joe uh i don't know and besides that i have um this is called damaged life by Todd Sloan, which is the crisis of the modern psyche. I think this is comes from the world of um, critical psychology, which I enjoy. Kind of, it criticizes psychology. And then this other one, um, I'm making my way through called "The Four Freedoms" by Harvey K. It's what made the greatest, what made FDR and the Greatest Generation truly great. Um, and then uh, I don't think I'm reading any. I'm still reading this Aliens one. 
It's called Aliens, The First and Final Disclosure. This is a book that was recommended by um, a guy I love, but it's self-published with arguably the worst cover I've ever seen. And um, he is a funny man and very angry. And so I, I like that. Um, oh, no. I'm getting text. All right, guys. I have to get this stuff back in there. Um, look, if you ever get a chance to see Teresa Caputo, The Long Island Medium, I highly recommend that you do it and and enjoy your... Um, enjoy it because she is a consummate consummate she's a constant entertainer and i want to thank joe and steve and kevin uh for the incredible um texts just filled with absolute like vitriolic um anger uh and the sort of like deal with it elliot we don't care um the the specificity of the insults that were given are um gonna haunt me for a really long time especially joe's which because he does he sends he he doesn't joe doesn't know how to send um multiple sentences in one text and so he sends text 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 and when he's on when he's mad at me man whew, it is like just daggers every time and that's actually what i'm getting right now it's just all of them but like hey f you and it's kind of rude but whatever um all right um Arc the see the angel wings. I don't even know if they. It was like a map, so you could probably throw that in the back of a car. And then the rest, I think, was a projector. So the overhead is nothing on this show. She must just be doing very well, um, and good for her. So I, I um, and may. You all be at peace. May your family, um, alive or otherwise, be at peace. And um, thank you for your time. And I love you. Goodbye.